Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool, and in this episode I want to show why you're not getting correct colors possibly using Adobe's Lightroom and how to fix it. I'm going to show some behind the scenes of why you might be getting some incorrect colors once you import some of your files, how doing a few simple steps can correct that, but then I'm going to take that a step further and show an advanced but yet very simple technique that's often overlooked as a feature in Lightroom so that you can get it correct very, very close every single time. Now, no matter what anybody tells you, it's not a matter of Adobe. Some people will say, well, don't use Adobe products. Use Don't use Lightroom and Photoshop. Think about using a Capture One or some other type of editing program, but they all will have the same problem if they're not made by your camera's manufacturer. And the reason for this is that your raw files aren't just raw files. They all hold proprietary information that the camera manufacturer knows then how to demosaic, in other words, how to decode that raw file to get the best possible colors out of it. But those programs, as you know, aren't quite efficient for doing a lot of workflows, especially when it comes to standard real estate photography. So that's why I've mentioned throughout my books, throughout my other videos, that when I do high-end work, especially when I do portrait work or I'm doing architectural work, I like to convert convert those raw files to TIFFs so that the demosaicing process of having those then correct colors, the correct uh, dynamic range, everything is as accurate as I saw it in camera and that's what I was expecting then when I start editing it. That's just not feasible for a lot of work. So that's what we're going to dig into taking a look at some real estate photography examples to show why your color isn't correct in Lightroom, some simple steps to correct it, but then taking that a step further. You ready to get started? Let's go. Now this is the example that we'll start with to show why colors would be off. I know it's not the sexiest room. This is from a recent shoot and there was a lot of color challenges with this because this is a green room, green walls. We've got red throughout here and then there was incandescent lighting. So we've got some orange casts that were happening. You really can't see those because this was the final image after all the editing was done and all the flambient was applied to it and fire that was put inside of the fireplace also. And that type of stuff I show throughout the books, other videos and whatnot. And by the way, some of what I'm going to be talking about here will refer to recent videos and also some of my books. I've got links to all that down in the description for this video. Moving on to the, what we were up against when we took the ambient shot, we can see all kinds of nasty casts. That's why we introduced flash. But when we did, this is how Lightroom interpreted this shot. Immediately you're thinking we've got strange color casts that are going on. But that's not correct. If we take a look at how Nikon software would interpret this, we can see there's a lot of green. This is NX Studio. If you're using an Nikon camera, the OEM software in this case would be either NX Studio Capture NXD, or if you're using Canon, it would be DPP. If you're using Sony, it would be Imaging Edge, not Capture One, Imaging Edge. These programs know how to demosaic, in other words, how to decode the RAW files and properly then apply the various color multipliers to what they find on the camera sensor. So anyways, that's why when you bring it into Lightroom, yeah, the colors are definitely off because it doesn't know all that proprietary information. They've basically reversed engineered this and it doesn't matter what software program you're using. If it's not made by the camera manufacturer, you're going to get just different results and it will vary from picture to picture. So the biggest reason though why we're getting this particular color cast, it's there is some stuff with white balance and like I showed in the recent video, we probably aren't at 4,700 more than likely up here. I'll bet you we're at about 4,500. So let's just do that first, just to make sure we're not. And that helped a little bit. That took off a little bit of the edge. If we go down here to where we were, and then we go to where that is, that's fine. It took out a little bit of that warmth, but it's still not correct. We don't want to necessarily just click on something on the ceiling to try to correct it. That got rid of a lot of that red, but the colors still aren't quite accurate. So we're going to fix that next. So one of the big reasons why this is happening and also why the colors are very rich looking is because of this treatment profile that is selected by default and right now it's set to Adobe Color. That's what Adobe thinks would be most beneficial to most photographers because it really richens up the image. It's not what we want for interior photography. So up here you can select a few different things. You can always select standard and you can see that toned it down quite a bit. 
and we're really close. You can take that though further and instead of standard, then you can go to browse. And then under camera matching, this section here, will be a variety of different profiles to try to match the different things in your camera. In this case, we used camera standard. So that's what was used for this particular image. So we can close that. So that's starting to get a lot closer. So once again, when we had our temperature correction, Adobe standard was this, and then camera standard was this. You can see it definitely is still quite a bit on the rich side. So we're starting to get a lot closer to where we should be. But then there's something else. Every single one of the pictures that you're taking with your camera, if you've done these steps, and it still looks like you've still got a little bit of red tint or a little too much green tint, not just in one image, but across a variety of images, then Lightroom has a problem with calibration. It's not quite decoding what you are seeing coming out of your camera. So there's an easy way to fix that. And what you do is at the very bottom of the edit panel down here, there's a calibration panel. A lot of times this is just collapsed, so you'd have to open it. Now in here, it's a little bit tricky on what you want to adjust because when you do adjust this, you'll want to try this across a variety of images. So what I've done is I have two different presets. One that I've done for my, when I'm using the Nikon Z5 with the FTZ adapter, it's right here. And so that does the standard corrections and really all that it did was just enable profile correction. And then a little bit of standard sharpening that was also down here. And this is stuff that I have in the books, it's no big deal. But the biggest thing here was that it went to camera standard up here for the profile. So that gets me really close to where I should be. But it's not really using anything calibrated. So that's why I have also another preset right here and it's called FTZ calibrated. Now, if I click on that, we can see that some of those casts went away. Let's get up here into some shadow areas, especially. So if I go back here to where FTZ was, there's a bit of a red tint. It's not very much, it's just a little bit. When I select my calibrated profile, there's a lot more green that starts coming through. So what is that? Let's scroll down, take a quick look. Now this will vary based on your camera and what you're shooting with, your lens will also have a little bit of, of an adjustment there, but not very much. So uh, the few differences that you'll have between the lens and camera, but you need to do this for your own work, your own camera. In this case, for the Z5, using the FTZ adapter with the Takina 16 to 28, I found that I needed to bring the tint down just by negative four. The red primary also, I changed the hue so that it wasn't so red. If I were to go way back over here, you see that's on the purple range. If I were to be way up over here, that's on the green range. So all that I needed to do was bring that up to plus nine. A little bit more green, a little less red. Same thing with the tint that was in the shadows. And then the saturation I brought down just a little bit. Now this isn't a complete desaturation slider. You can see that here even at negative 100, it didn't desaturate the red hues completely out of it. They're really low if you take a look here, but if we saturated really high, yeah, they're, they're pretty high, but it's not completely oversaturated. So that's why just toning that down just a little bit did that trick. Now, once again, when this was all done, this is what it looked like, but let's take a look at a couple other examples and how this would apply and the differences it would make. Now here's another finished image and this was a bit of a nightmare. If we take a look even at the ambient shot, we've got all kinds of neat colored bulbs that are going around. We've got some cast that's coming in off of the, uh, from the window going to the outside. And of course this is just a yellow room. So you're gonna get a lot of strange colors and it's gonna throw off auto white balance. It's gonna throw off white balance to begin with. So let's go to a flash shot. And this then was corrected for the white balance and also for the adjustments that I just did with calibration. So this worked out fairly well, but let's go back to the beginning where we were. So you can see it picked up just an awful looking amount of cast. So lowering the white balance then, and here I lowered it down to just under 3,900, still a lot of casts. If I were to do just the standard preset to it, which was just with the FTZ adapter, no calibration. Once again, if we go down to the calibration panel, you can see there is nothing that's been applied there. Just our standard uh, lens correction stuff and a little bit of sharpening. 
Also using camera standard as the profile, if we were to be doing the uh, Adobe Color, it's just gonna look awful. So let's go back to where we had that applied. So that's looking pretty good, but once again, it's still got a lot of casts up here. The ceiling's one thing and that can be desaturated, but we've still got a lot of just little tints of red showing up. If you were to try to do an eyedropper in this thinking it's only white balance, you're gonna really desaturate a lot of stuff. And no matter what, you're still gonna have an issue with little bits of red up here. So let's not do that. Instead, let's use our calibration profile. So we apply the calibration and immediately we can see a subtle difference. So a little bit of red then goes away. Here's without that calibration, here's with that calibration. Let's go in here a little closer into these shadowed areas and here's without the calibration, got a lot more red, and this is with that calibration. So looking a lot better. Let's take a look at another example, a completely different house, completely different type of paint. So this is the finished image here on this, and it's a little bit of a green wall. So once again, we're gonna have some strangeness in our uh, color casts, but let's take a look at just one of the raw files. So here's raw that came in, and you can see it's got Adobe Color applied to it. Let's use the standard profile, which corrected that, which used in camera standard. And that's pretty good. Once again, it doesn't have the calibration attached to it, but we can see that there's a little bit of cast still on the ceiling and that's some of that's coming off the hardwood floor from flashing here, but there's just always little bits of red that are in here, for instance, on what should be white. So if we apply then our calibrated profile to that, that improves. Now the biggest improvement that you'll see is that we lost richness out of this dresser here. If we zoom in on that and go back and forth to without calibration, you can see how red that looks. With it calibrated, this is how it looks. And I can tell you from being there firsthand that this is a more accurate representation. Also, let's look at the ceiling up here and little casts that would be on it. This was without our calibration, little bit of red tints that are showing up here on the ceiling. And then once we apply the calibration to it, it just whitens up just a little bit. Now these are subtle little differences, but once again, across the board, this needs to be tested for all kinds of circumstances. So in this case, this is something where, this is a kind of a beigeish brownish wall. If we apply just the standard preset to this, then we get a lot of that going away because once again, it selected the camera standard profile. So this is when it had the Adobe Color applied to it and there's just a ton of red in this. So once we apply the, uh, the standard profile out of the camera, then a lot of that goes away. Now, your camera is gonna vary on what could be there and of course you could try the Adobe standard also, but we'll go back here to camera standard. Now, applying then the calibration, which is just that little bit of added tweak, then we get a little bit more green that's starting to show up. In a sense, what we're seeing is just less red. This is now just more of a true beige color. So that improved quite a bit as well. So here's another flash shot of what should be pretty much an all white room, although the, uh, the walls are kind of got a little bit of a beige tint to it. But when we take a look here, the straight out of import for this flash shot using Adobe Color up here, there's a lot of red that's showing up here. These colors are not accurate at all. So if we apply then just the standard preset to it, which uses then camera standard, great improvement. Taking that one step further using our calibrated profile, then even that other red goes away. Now, you'll notice this change down here in the hardwood floor. If you look at that, if we go to our before, then you can see there's a lot more red that's in that floor. So the reds are richer. There's also red that'll show up right in along this line up here of the ceiling to the wall. And when we go to our calibrated profile, that bit of those bits of red, that color cast goes away. And same on the floor going back and forth. Once again, non-calibrated to calibrated. So this is an important thing to use. Also, you can take this a step further if you're not just using this for real estate photography, little bonus here. If you're gonna be doing some portrait photography, there are other camera profiles that you should be aware of. And one of those is called portrait. If we go back over to, for instance, NX Studio, in here, this profile, this particular one, they call it a picture control here. This was using standard.
If this were to use the portrait, we can see that it would kind of flatten out a bit. And yes, you can use some other flattened profiles and neutral profiles, but for real estate photography, it loses a lot of punch. If we were to be over here in Lightroom, and let's go back out to where this first imported. So instead of using the standard uh, profile, treatment profile for the camera, you could navigate over here and also find that portrait one, which would be here. So that's not a bad looking one compared to then using standard, which richened things up. So you could go to portrait, but also notice then what happens. If we go out here to try to get that view outside, portrait mode definitely kind of softened that up too much and lost some of the oomph out of the color. So that's why standard, that adds just a little bit more contrast to it. Neutral washes it out. Standard brings in a little bit more saturation. Those are things that are great for real estate photography. They're not good for portrait photography and possibly other work. But knowing what your various camera profiles are under camera matching, for those treatment files, when you're in Adobe Lightroom, those can get you a good starting point. And once again, if we're doing real estate photography, I don't recommend at all using the Adobe Color. I recommend either using Adobe Standard or something that is camera matching. And then if you're still not there, then consider then doing some light calibration using the calibration pane down in Lightroom. Once you have the calibration set, just like any other preset, you can either create a new preset set by saying create new preset or you could right click on a preset and then update with current settings. Well I hope this video was useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video and you want to see more you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> it won't cost anything and as soon as one of these videos is posted you'll be the first to know. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.